Welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on parallel lines and corresponding angles. Some stuff you should already know are what lines are, what vertical angles are and how to calculate them, the same exact thing with supplementary angles, and the different types of angles there are. So make sure you know those and let's get started. So first of all, what exactly are parallel lines? Well, parallel lines are lines that never, ever, ever, ever intersect. They never, ever cross, no matter how long they go on. So these two are parallel lines because they'll go on and on in both directions forever, and they will never, ever touch. These are also parallel lines. These are also parallel lines. These are also parallel lines, and there don't just have to be two. There can be more than two. There can be three or four or even five, and even more than that. So what is a transversal? A transversal, it seems like I basically just took that term out of nowhere, but it's one of the most critical things when we're talking about parallel lines. The transversal is a line that intersects a set of parallel lines. So here we have a set of parallel lines, and the line that cuts right through them is the transversal. So this line here is our transversal. Again, we have a set of parallel lines, and this line here is a transversal. It doesn't have to go straight up. It can be slanted down towards the right, and it can be slanted up towards the right. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a set of parallel lines and a line that cuts through those, that line that cuts through the parallel lines is the transversal. So what are corresponding angles? Well, corresponding angles are angles with the same location or position. So basically, when we have our transversal, our transversal cutting through those parallel lines creates groups of angles. We have a group of four angles here and a group of four angles here. Well, each of those angles has a position. Let's talk about these top four first. Angle one here is our top left angle. Of these four angles, angle one is the top left. Angle two is the top right. Angle three is the bottom left and angle four is the bottom right. So those are the positions of those angles. Now let's take a look at the bottom four angles. They also have positions. Angle five is the top left. Angle six is the top right. Angle seven is the bottom left. And angle eight is the bottom right. So those are the positions of these four angles. Okay, so for angles five, six, seven, and eight, these are their positions. Well, corresponding angles are angles that have the same location or position. So angle one and angle five, both are the top left angles for their groups. So angle one and five are corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are congruent, which just means that they're the same size. So angle one is congruent to angle five. This symbol here is the symbol for congruent. It's an equal sign with a little squiggle on top. So basically, because angle one and angle five are corresponding angles, they are congruent. Well, what about angle two? Angle two is a top right angle. Well, what's the other top right angle here? Well, that's angle six. Angle six is a top right angle for its group of angles. Well, that means that angle two and angle six are corresponding. Therefore, angles two and six are congruent. Well, what about angle three? What angle corresponds to angle three? Angle three is the bottom left angle. And what is our bottom left angle here? Well, that's angle seven. So therefore, angles three and seven are corresponding angles, making angle three congruent to angle seven. And how about angle four? Angle four is our bottom right angle for the top group of angles. Well, then what is the corresponding angle for angle four? Well, that means we have to find the other bottom right angle, and that's angle eight. Because they're both bottom right angles, they share the same location or position, they are corresponding. So angles four and eight are corresponding. That means that angle four is congruent to angle eight. So let's see if we can tell which angles correspond. Angle A corresponds to what angle? Well, first of all, you have to know what lines are the parallel lines and what line is a transversal. Well, this line and this line here are our parallel lines because they're never going to intersect. And they are crossed by this line here, which is our transversal. So 
what angle corresponds to angle A? Well, remember, there are two parallel lines. Each line will have a set of angles. Here we have A, B, C, D. And here we have W, X, Y, Z. And A you can call your top left angle. Okay, because you have angle A and angle C right here. Angle A is on the top to the left. Angle C is on the top to the right. Angle B here is the bottom left. And angle D here is the bottom right. Well, angle A is our top left angle here. So what is our top left angle here? Well, that's angle W. So angle A corresponds to angle W. How about angle C? Angle C is our top right angle here. What's our top right angle here? Well, W is our top left, so Y is our top right. That means C corresponds to angle Y. How about angle X? Angle X is over here, and it's our bottom left angle here. So, what's our bottom left angle on this side? Well, that's angle B, so angle X corresponds to angle B. And angle Z corresponds to what? Angle Z is our bottom right angle, so therefore it corresponds to the bottom right angle over here, which is angle D, so angle Z corresponds to angle D. This is basically the same diagram as the last example. The only difference is that we've given angle C a value, and that's going to be 113 degrees. So what's the measure of angle B? This little M here in front of the angle symbol stands for measure. So what's the measure of angle B? Well, if angle C is 113 degrees, then we said before the lesson started that we should be good with vertical angles. Angle C and angle B are actually vertical. Therefore, the measure of angle B is 113 degrees. How about the measure of angle X? Well, since we now know that the measure of angle B is 113 degrees, and we know that angle B corresponds to angle X, that means that the measure of angle X is also 113 degrees, because corresponding angles are congruent. And angle B is our bottom left angle here, angle X is our bottom left angle here, therefore they are corresponding. How about the measure of angle D? Well, the measure of angle D is actually equal to 67 degrees. And before the lesson started, I said you should be comfortable with supplementary angles. If angle B is 113 degrees, and this whole line here is 180 degrees, that means the measure of angle D is 67 degrees. Well, now we know the measure of angle D is 67 degrees. Therefore, what's the measure of angle Z? Well, angle D is a bottom right angle, and angle Z is also a bottom right angle. Therefore, they correspond. So if the measure of angle D is 67 degrees, then the measure of angle Z is also 67 degrees. So here we have an example of parallel lines cut by a transversal. But as you can see, this looks a lot more difficult than what we've seen already. And the reason why is because here we have three parallel lines instead of the normal two parallel lines. But no matter, it's the same exact thing. We're looking at the corresponding angles. So if they have the same location or position, they're corresponding. So let's take a look. Angle 1 corresponds to what angles? Well, angle 1 corresponds to angles 3 and 7. And here's why. Angle 1 is our top left angle in this group. And angle 3 is our top left angle in this group. So they correspond. And angle 1 is a top left angle here. And angle 7 is a top left angle here. So those correspond as well. How about angle 12? Angle 12 corresponds to, what do you think? Well, angle 12 corresponds to angles 2 and 8, and here's why. When we have angle 12, angle 12 is the top right angle in this group, and angle 2 is the top right angle in this group. So angles 2 and 12 correspond. But angle 8 is also a top right angle. So angle 8 corresponds to angle 12 as well. How about angle 9? Angle 9 corresponds to angles 5 and 11. And here's why. Angle 9 is the bottom left angle. That's its position. Angle 5 is the bottom left angle of these angles. So they correspond. And angle 11 is also a bottom left angle. Therefore, they correspond as well. 
And how about angle 10? What angles correspond to angle 10? What do you think? Well, that's angle 4 and 6. Remember, angle 10 is the bottom right angle in this group of angles. So, angle 4 is also its bottom right angle in its group. And angle 6 is the bottom right angle in its group. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go. So let's take a look at our answers. For numbers 1 through 4, we're looking for the corresponding angles. So, number 1, what corresponds with angle 3? That's angle 1. Number 2, what corresponds with angle 2? That's angle 12. Number 3, what corresponds with angle 10? That's angle 4. Number 4, what corresponds with angle 11? That's angle 9. And for numbers 5 through 7, if the measure of angle 9 is 21 degrees, then what is the measure of angle 11? Well, that's 21 degrees. Number 6, what's the measure of angle 1? 159 degrees. And number 7, what's the measure of angle 3? That's also 159 degrees. So let's review this lesson. Two lines that never cross are called parallel lines. A line that passes through a set of parallel lines is called a transversal. Angles that have the same location or position are called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.